morning fourth and fifth grade and welcome to our monthly preteen large group for the month of October or as we like to call it around here for Sunday Chapel. My name is Miss Emily and I'm so excited you're here. All month long we have been learning together about our life app of integrity. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. Have you ever worn a costume before? Maybe to go trick-or-treating? Maybe you wore it to fall festival one year for trunk or treat. Maybe you've been in a play or a musical and you got to act like a totally different person in your costume too. Costumes can be lots of fun, but God made you exactly the way you are and the way he made you is amazing. And you see, integrity is about being truthful in everything you say and do, right? So sometimes you need to choose to drop the act when you're not in a play or it's not Halloween, but every single day you have to choose to be you and to be honest, and that's what integrity is. So while costumes are fun, when it comes to every day, it's important to drop the act and live with integrity. All month long, we've been hearing amazing stories from the Bible that have taught us about integrity. Some of those stories have taught us about how to have integrity, and some of them, like that story last week, taught us how to not have integrity. This week, we've got a Bible verse from the book of Philippians. But before we get there, we need to set our sacred space, don't we? So I have with us our sacred chapel box, and I've got a few things in here. First, I have our purple cloth. So I'll lay that out for us. And then atop this purple cloth, I'm going to put three candles. Do you know why I have three? You see, I have three candles because they represent somebody. These candles represent someone that is in this sacred space with us. And that is God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so as I light each one of these candles, I want you at home to say along with me, God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And as I light each one and we set our sacred space together and with God, I want you to remind yourself that you, my friend, are not alone. Are you ready to set our space? We've got God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the last thing in our sacred space box is our Bible. And now let's head over to the so-and-so show and see what we can learn from those guys over there. And I think Kellen has a story for us today from the book of Philippians. Ah, Brando, I see you've come to take over the show today. Well, not if I have anything to do about it. <laughs> Whose show is it now, Brando? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> It is mine, Jonzo. <laughs> you dare show your face around here. I will not let you take over the show today, eh? Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. You were saying? Welcome to the So-and-So Show. What an incredible show we have for you today, right, Brandon? Yeah, well, incredible is a strong word. Well, yeah, so, yeah and it's, it's the perfect good. word for today's show. I don't think so. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, how about strum diddly umptious? Strum diddly umptious, when words don't suffice, and only a strum will do. 
Yeah, that's definitely not the word. Okay, what word would you use to describe today's show? Fine. Yeah, fine. Come up with a word. Fine. We're waiting. Fine. No, you don't have to get upset with me. I'll still be no. patient with you. Listen. Fine. 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 Yes, I think today's show will be fine. Fine? Mm-hmm. <laughs> or that's it? Satisfactory. Satisfactory? Are you kidding yeah. me? The show is amazing today. Meh. Buddy, what's going on? Nothing. I just I just don't want to get too excited. That's all. Why not? Because life can sometimes be hard, and I don't think that we should forget that. Uh, well, yeah, life can be hard, but life can be great, too. Yeah, but if I remind myself that things can always get much, much worse than, than when they actually do get worse, I won't be surprised. Okay, okay, okay. What if something happens that is really exciting to you? Oh, like this. <laughs> yeah, see? I love that. That is so funny. Yeah. I don't remember that. Uh... What just happened? I just... I thought about the fact that some flowers have thorns, and if you walk by them, they can scratch you. I don't understand you. Well, John, it's like this. Dog poo on new shoes and old rotten cabbage. Expired goat's milk and overweight baggage. Using a dull spoon to shave off my scruff. This is just some of my least favorite stuff. Flu germs in smoothies and watered down soda. Hearing the spoilers about Baby Yoda. My leg impaled by a Billy Goat's gruff. This is just some of my least favorite stuff. You put a lot of thought into this. You have no idea. Feastings on eyelids and freeze pops in bathrooms. Falling from tall trees, smelling diesel car fumes. Rice Krispies with mayonnaise, not marshmallow fluff. This is just some of my least favorite stuff. When I'm laughing, when my team wins, when I'm feeling rad, I simply remember my least favorite stuff, and then I don't feel so glad. It's Bible story time with Kellen. What's up, fellas? Just trying to cheer this guy up. Why? What's wrong? Well, Kellen, it's like this. No! Not sure what's going on, but can you guys help me out with today's story? Sure, what did you have in mind? This. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Host View. We are joined today by our contestants, Brandon's team and John's team. Brandon, who have you brought with you today? Uh, it, well, it looks like I have a mannequin uh, with my picture on it. Not sure how helpful that's going to be. Speak for yourself, Brandon. Okay, that's weird. Uh, and also, I have a picture of my childhood cat, Catherine the Great. Hey, ow. Hello, Kellen. Fantastic. John, who's on your team? Well, I have an enlarged picture from my eighth grade yearbook. Hey, Kellen. Hey, me. You look great. No, you look great. Aww. And uh, also on my team is a potato. Top of the morning, everyone. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Let's hop to it. Let's play the host feud. The top eight answers are on the board. We ask the question, according to the Apostle Paul in Philippians 4.8, what kinds of things should you think about? Brandon? Dull things. Dull things. Dull things, yes. All right, let's see dull things. Ooh, I am so sorry, Brandon. John? Uh, things that are noble. Yeah, yeah, yeah you should think of noble oh, good things. answer. All right. Let's see, Noble. 
Number yes. two, Noble Things Jump. Do you want to play or pass? Uh, what do you want to do? Play, play, let's play. We're, hey, we're going to play. Let's play. Kellen. We're going to play, Kellen. Okay, I, I think we're going to play, Kellen. We're going to play. Kellen. We're going to play. They're going to play. John's yearbook photo. According to Paul, what kind of things should you think about? Um, I'm going to have to say excellent things. Good answer. Good, good answer. answer. Good answer. All right. Let's see excellent things. Yes. Number seven. Well done. Potato, what do you think about? Well, as a potato, people always want to add things to me or cut me into little pieces. Tater tots, french fries, hash browns. But I prefer just being a pure potato. So I'm going to say pure things. Good answer. That's a good answer. Oh, good answer. Good answer. All right. Let's see pure things. Number four. Nice job, Potato. Back to you, John. Let's go with uh, lovely things. Good answer. Good answer. Show me lovely. <laughs> you hey! got it. John's yearbook photo. According to Paul, what kind of things should you think about? I don't know. How about uh, things or people you respect? Good answer. Good yeah. answer. Good answer. Good answer. Eighth line. grade John wants you to show him some respect. Oh, Number yes. six. John's team, you are on a roll. Potato, according to Paul, what kinds of things should you think about? Oh, I know what I think about a lot. Ketchup. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Um, show me ketchup. Ooh, that was your first strike. Two more, and Brandon's team has a chance to steal. What are you thinking about, John? What would Paul say? Um, um, well, I'm thinking about praiseworthy things. Praiseworthy things. Yes, good answer. Show me good praiseworthy. Answer. Number eight, worthy of praise. John's yearbook photo? Uh, what was the question again? According to Paul, what kinds of things should you think about? Right, right, right. Oh, well, show me what is right. No, I was just... Oh, you got it. Number three. Gnarly. <laughs> One answer left. Potato? Corned beef hash. That's good answer. <laughs> no, what? No, that's just wrong. Show me corned beef hash. Shocking. It comes down to this, John. One answer left. You get it right, and you win. You miss it, and Brandon's team gets a chance to steal. The number one answer is still on the board. According to the Apostle Paul in Philippians 4.8, what kinds of things should you think about? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, don't know. We need an answer. Um, Ooh, so sorry, John's team. All right, Brandon's team, do you have an answer? A balls of yarn, goldfish, myself, uh, balls things of that yarn. are scary. Did I say that? Scary Catnip. things. Uh, really scary things. Scary things. So scary. Man, I wish this was a true or false quiz. That's it. True or false. Uh, true. Uh, you think of things that are true. That's it. Brandon's team wins. All right. Yeah, we win. Wow. Thank you to both our contestants. <laughs> this was the host team. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Great job. Great job, Brandon. Oh, good. good on you. That was fun, Kellen. Yeah, definitely. No doubt. Thanks for helping, guys. So to review, the Apostle Paul wrote this in Philippians 4, 8. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. Oh, I think I get it. I've been choosing to think about things that are negative, things that aren't lovely or pure or true. I, I should be focusing on what Paul wrote about instead. Definitely. It may not feel like it sometimes, but you are in charge of what you think. Maybe you can't control every single thought that enters your brain, but you can definitely decide what you focus on. 
And if we focus on these things, it can help us live and think a little more like Jesus. Thanks, Kellen. You got it. I'll see you guys later. See you. Yeah, bye, Kellen. What are you doing? I'm trying to, trying to control what I think about. It is not easy. Oh, well, don't think about me dressed like a Ninja Turtle going down a water slide. <laughs> oh, man, now that's all I can think about. <laughs> uh, reveal the question. Oh, what do you tend to focus on? Be honest. Sometimes I focus on what can go wrong, but after today, I'm going to work on that. Oh, great. And I'm going to focus on excellent and true things like pizza with extra cheese and God's love. Now I'm thinking about pizza. Lunch? Let's do it. Awesome. See you all later. Hey, I'm going to, hey. What? You know what? I'll provide some lunch music. Oh, man. Yeah. Strum diddly um shus. On God! <laughs> okay. If I have to. Okay. Uh -huh. all right. Oh, good yep. parry. Good parry. Ah! Oh, I see. Where's your move? Look at that. Aha, you can't. Yeah. No, you're. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, exhausting. But I won't give up. Hey, what's that? Huh? Oh. Oh. The old what's that? I should have seen it coming. Oh. oh. Yeah, now it makes sense. When you change your focus, it changes everything. Our bottom line for you this week is focus on what's true. God has a plan and God made you for a reason, remember? You can choose to focus on what Paul reminded us to, on what is good, what is right, and what is true. You can choose to focus on the fact that you have a God that loves you so much, that made you just the way you are, and has a plan for you. You can choose to live with integrity and live truthfully as yourself, just how God made you. Our question for you this week, though, is what do you choose to focus on? Because it sounds all well and good to focus on what's true and what's good, but sometimes life gets messy, doesn't it? Sometimes lots of not very awesome things happen, and it's a lot easier to focus on those, especially when it seems to be all around us. Sometimes we get mad, sometimes just bad things happen, sometimes we get sad. And that's okay. You're allowed to feel those things. But it's important to always remember that you are not alone in those moments and that God loves you so much and that he has a plan for you and he is with you all the time. It's important to choose to live with integrity and to choose to remind yourself to trust in God and be you. I want us to look at our memory verse one last time this month. It's from the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 9. Now, you guys have been reading from um, NIRV, but I'm going to read from NIV. I'll put the verse you've been reading all month long up on the screen, though, so follow along with me. Our memory verse says, Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. It's important to live truthfully to choose to live with integrity. And when you're having a hard time with that, remember to focus on what's true and focus on God. And remember that you are not alone. Friends, will you pray with me? We'll open our hands wide and say, let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for loving us so much that you made us just the way we are in your image. Dear Lord, we thank you for all of the, the blessings you've given us. We thank you for this space that we share with one another um, virtually. And God, we ask you to help us when we're struggling to remember to focus on what's true and focus on you. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Friends, thank you so much for joining me for our October preteen large group for for Sunday Chapel. I've had so much fun learning with you all month long about integrity, and I can't wait to see what our life app is next month. So as I blow out our candles, we will part ways and let's say our blessing together. So after I blow out these candles, you can either draw a cross or a heart and we'll say together the words, you are blessed to be a blessing. You ready? Friends, you are blessed to be a blessing. <laughs> 